khas. And welcome to worship. I'm Gordon Flint, um, and it's good to be with you to worship as we worship this day as Carol and Anne takes a week away. To us gathered together in this sanctuary, and those gathered yet scattered online at home, around kitchen tables and in living rooms, may we know that we are one in God and one in worship. It is our hope and our trust that we open ourselves up to the spirit that is here with us now. Let us worship God. We are blessed to live on this land, a sacred land, that is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Mississauga. Indigenous and settler people came together to create formalized treaty agreements and sadly Continually, settlers have failed to fully honor those treaties. Those of us who are settlers have a duty to reconcile the wrongs done to the indigenous people of this land, and we ask for God's strength and guidance as we commit ourselves to building right relationships. Great Spirit of God, you have healed our wounds. You restore, restore us, us on paths of hurt, pain, and anger. You have blessed our life that we may be blessings to others. Let, Let us remember, remember the way you have, you have turned, turned our, our mourning into, into dancing. dancing. Let, Let us, us give, give thanks, thanks to you forever. forever. Your hands, O Christ. Numbers. If you're using the hymn books, it's number 622. Your hands, O Christ. Your hands, O Christ, in days of old were strong to heal and save.
Now is the time to sing, to sing the good news of God. Now is the time to offer praise to God in every place. Now is the time to join all creation in extolling God from the depths of the sea to the furthest galaxies. We will sing the good news of Easter. We will rejoice in God who loves and heals us all. I ask you now to join me in prayer as we pray together. All our power to good comes from you, source of all being. to heal, to love, comes from you in your grace and mercy. Very end, the gift of life and the resurrection life comes from you, Holy One. Take us by the hand today, raise us up to stand in your presence and fill us with wonder and amazement so we may heal and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you, O God, raise from the dead. Amen. We will now have our contemplative music. Um, we will play it through one time and then we will sing it through twice. Holy Spirit, come to us. We can hold on to hurt until our hands begin to cramp and keep holding. Though they bow our back, we refuse to set our grudges down because we do not know what it would be like to have that weight lifted off us. And we think that is why, and we think that is the way God operates as well. But God. Let us dare to bring our prayers to the one who hears us and heals us. May we entrust confidently and boldly pray our, pray our prayer of forgiveness and reconciliation together as we confess our lives to our God. Let us pray. You invite us to pay attention, O God, to notice the people around us, even we, we might easily get wrapped up in our own plans or habits. We confess that we often do not notice the way our habits and plans exclude others. Until it happens to us, we do not see the people who cannot get into the sp our spaces. We cannot act in our unity. We confess that we prefer to look away from those who would make us uncomfortable, would his or more minds or spirits work differently from ours? 
whose life experience challenges our worldview. And when we do look with something other than hostility or apathy, we confess it is mostly to judge their worthiness, not with love or gift. Forgive us, God of inclusion, when we look past our exclusion and think we cannot change it because it is the way it has always been. Forgive us, O God of the downtrodden, when we look away with, from those who we do not think deserve our help. Forgive us, God of the impossible, when we limit your love to that transaction, refusing to take a risk that might lead us past what we think we are capable of. Expand our imagination to the possibility of healing, to the possibility of resurrection, to the possibility of amazement, to the possibility of community, to the possibility of love. We ask in the name of the one who makes all things possible, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing, shout, rejoice. God, Jesus calls us to serve and in service to heal because of his love and trust for us. Jesus, Jesus believes in us for all the gifts we have been given. Trust and serve in faith and love. Jesus Christ is with us all. Our first reading today is from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. Our responsive reading is Psalm 67, found in Voices United on page 786. I'm going to get Jim to uh, play the uh, refrain one time and we'll sing it and do the reading.
Be gracious unto us, O God, and bless us, and let the light of your face shine upon us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you you judge the people righteously and guide the nations of the earth. The earth has yielded its harvest, and you, our God, have blessed us. The final reading today is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gates called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. When the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our next hymn is Come and Find the Quiet Center. Come and Find the Quiet Center.
As I begin the reflection this morning, I want to acknowledge that these thoughts are not solely my own and are influenced and impacted by others. Thank you to all the others. Let us pray. We do not presume lightly to speak the word of God, and we do not presume lightly to hear the word of God. For in God's word there is life, life eternal. May we be open to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to begin today with a confession and an observation. My confession is that I am supposed to focus on the reading from Acts with Peter's healing. And what I want to acknowledge that I drifted away and I'm going to spend more of my time with the gospel reading than I should. And my observation is this, that the two scripture readings from John and Acts are jarringly, unnervingly similar. The overlaps are such that I became convinced over this week that what I say about one is directly translatable to the other. I trust the overlaps will speak for themselves as I continue. If you have spent any time reading the Gospels, then you know that Jesus asks in-your-face questions. Do you love me? Why are you so afraid? Are you also going to leave? How long shall I put up with you? Do you still not understand? But the question he asks in this week's gospel story might be the most jarring of all. The setting in which he asks it is in Jerusalem, near the pool, the pool by the sheep's gate, or for Peter's story, the gate of the temple. In the five particles by the, por the pool of the sheep's gate, the chronically sick and disabled of the city lie in waiting. Rumor, legend, or tradition has it that the angels visit the pool at random times, stirring up the water and giving it healing powers. The first person into the, to step into the pool after the angels disturb it receives healing. For Jesus, when he visits his outdoor nursing home, he finds a man living by the pool who is sick for 38 years and approaches him with a question. No introductions, no small talk, no sermon, just a question. Do you want to be made well? Is it just me? Or is this an uncomfortable making question? And in, any ways, and in many ways, I have come to prefer Peter's simple but complex approach of all said and done to Jesus' unsettling question. How do you feel if you were unwell for close to four decades and a stranger comes along one day and asks if you really want to get better, implying that your ongoing sickness was at least partially your fault, implying that you were benefiting consciously or unconsciously from remaining sick? implying that you were somehow invested in your brokenness, that you had stakes in it, that you identif your identity was so wrapped up in your infirmity, weakness, or defeat, you couldn't imagine your life without your illness. How would you feel? How would you respond? Would you hear pure insult in the question? Or would you hear a faint echo of the truth? the kind of truth that hurts? Or would you just prefer Peter's approach? Let me be clear. I don't believe for a moment that Jesus is blaming the victim in this story. All of the Gospels attest to his deep compassion for the sick and the disabled as the faithful would continue. What once in the scripture does he respond to pain or illness with contempt, mockery, or condensation? Not once, did, does all, not once does he tell a sick person that her illness is her own fault. In fact, he corrects that cultural misunderstanding about disease and disability at every opportunity. All that I say, I all of that to say, 
I trust Peter and Jesus' heart and their motives throughout both stories. I trust Jesus enough to take his question in this gospel story at face value. When he looks at the man who has been languishing by the pool for 38 years, he sees more than sickness. He sees defeat. He sees resignation. He sees psychological and spiritual stagnation. He sees a man whose hopes has dwindled, a man whose imagination has atrophied to such a point that he cannot even articulate what he wants for his body, his soul, or his future. How do I know this? Well, notice, he doesn't answer Jesus' question. Do you want to be made well? Jesus asks. And the man doesn't say yes. Isn't that a little odd? After 38 years of intense suffering, he doesn't say yes. Instead, he gets defensive. He explains the mechanics of the scarcity in his nursing home. I have no one to put me in the pool. He makes a compelling case for the cutthroat unfairness of the world. While I am making my way, someone steps down ahead of me. He invites pity, he hymns and he haws, he dodges. In short, he avoids answering the question Jesus actually asks, which isn't a question about the man's circumstances at all, but a question about his heart, his identity, and his desires. What do you want? Has Jesus ever asked you this question? Do we want to be made well from all the stymies, hobbles, and paralyzing that diminishes us? Do we want to stand up? Do we want to walk? Do we want to more? Or do we prefer Peter's singular statement? All done for us. How have you answered the questions in your past? And how would you answer them today? Do you know? For me, the question stings because I know exactly what it is like to say, I want out, to say, I want freedom, to say, I want healing, and not quite mean it. I know what it is like to cling to our brokenness because it is familiar. I know what it is like to make victimhood my identity. I know what it is like to to benefit from the very things that cause me harm. I know what it is like to sink into self-pity. I know what it is like to assume that everyone else has access to the magical pill I'll never get my hands on. I know what it is like to decide that I am doomed to sit at the very edge of healing for the rest of my life and never attain it. For me, the question stings because the very idea of God cares about what I want, that God is curious about my desires, that he, God makes me, wants me to recognize and articulate them, overwhelms me and blows me away. But if I'm willing to sit with the uncomfortable truths at the heart of this week's gospel story, maybe I can come to know what Jesus desires for me aren't murky, and two-sided like mine are. He wants me to be made well, period. He wants me to walk again, to thrive again, to live again. He wants me to deliver from, he wants to deliver me from paralysis of my past, my beige, my fear, my laziness. He wants me to want and to want fiercely. He wants me to say yes, do you want to be made well? Yes. Do you want to be raised up and leap in joy and amazement and astonishment? Yes. If there's anything more remarkable in this gospel story than Jesus' question, it is what happens after he asks it. Stand up, take your mat, and walk. Jesus tells the man, and the man does exactly that. At once, John tells us the man was made well and he took up his mat and began to walk.
Notice that neither man ever never asked for healing. There's no indication in neither story that they even know who Jesus or Peter are. Notice that neither Jesus nor Peter makes no reference to belief as Jesus, uh, Jesus often does when he performs a healing miracle. He doesn't tell the man your faith has made you well because that would be a lie. Notice that Jesus and Peter do not dwell on the man's past. Jesus does not drudge up the loss and the waste of 38 years the man can't get back. And notice he doesn't heal the man on the man's terms by helping him into the pool where the angels steer, stir the water. Jesus simply tells the man to get up and walk, and he does. Peter speaks, lifts up, and the man's feet and ankles are made strong. What I take away from this story is that Jesus always and everywhere is in the business of making new and making well. His desire to heal is intrinsic to his character. It doesn't depend on me. In other words, do you want to be well, made well is a question he will never stop asking because his heart's desire is for my wholeness, my freedom, and my thriving. And he understands that there is painful surgical power in the question itself. Confronting the zinger of the question of what we want, what we really want, is how the work of healing begins. And that remains at the core of, on, of the ongoing stories of the church. Amen. Our next hymn is As It Comes by the Breath of Spring. As It Comes by the Breath of Spring.
The earth has yielded its harvest, and you, our God, have blessed us. Therefore, we bring our gifts and offerings in joy, in astonishment, so your work may be done and your creation restored. Are we? Yes. May we in our gifts serve justice, righteousness, and love at all times, always. Let us bring our gifts and our offerings to God. Let I ask you now to join me in our oh, sorry, I got lost here for a second. Let us ask you to join me in the blessing over our gifts. Let us pray. May the gifts we offer this day, kind and healing God, bring joy to those whose mornings are hopeless. Feed those whose moon times are filled with hunger, and are to those whose nights are surrounded by fears and worry. May they be part of the healing work in the world. Bless our gifts and to us, yes, yes, and feet. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us now pray for ourselves and the world and the needs of that world that God so loves as we pray for people everywhere. You have created us most wonderful, O oh God. You have bodies and minds that are knit together so beautifully, each different and yet each belonging together. You have created your body most wonderful too, Savior Jesus, bringing together your diverse people into one community. You bring our joyous praise for all the ways you work within us, through us, among us, creating and recreating life even now. And we bring our prayers for those who have been excluded from community, for those whose bodies do not fit what we have decided is normal. For those whose minds who see different than what we see, those who have been left out, overlooked, pushed to the side and the margins of our society, may they, see, may they be seen in all their humanity and loved by others as they are already loved by you. <coughs> we also bring our prayers for those places that intentionally or unintentionally exclude asking for your imagination and your courage that we might make changes to make room for all. We lift prayer today for those living with illness or disability, those longing for healing, or those simply longing to be accepted as whole as they are, for those who are struggling with and within the healthcare system, those that they may be treated with dignity and compassion, for those who have been given who have given up hope of help, that they may be, they may be discover, that they may discover new possibilities. And for those who work in the health care, that they may be serve others with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We lift today prayer for restoration, O oh God, restoration of the, to the community, restoration to hope, Restoration to life abundant. Give us the confidence to share what we have, to lift up others, and to give what is needed, to dig deep and risk taking our neighbor by the hand, that together we might find your healing grace already at work. May we trust in your power, far greater than our own, and yet promise to us bringing joy beyond what we have known to ourselves and to others. In your holy name, amen. I ask you now to join me as we read together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There are a few announcements I should make. Okay. Um, study week, uh, Carol Ann's away on study week this week, so um, there are a couple of things that have been cancelled and not happening this week um, due to her absence. Um, the Trinity Happings is now available on our website, and there's a hard copy for those who prefer that at the back of the church in the narthex. The annual general meeting is scheduled for Sunday, May 5th, after our worship service. So um, please come out and share your input. The annual report will be made available next Sunday at the back of the church in the narthex in a paper format, and it will be available online beginning next Friday. That's still correct, Courtney? We're good? We're on track? Yes. Please remember Courtney in your prayers. <laughs> this is a week from. <laughs> um, the sing along for April is cancelled as well. So, um, but there will be a potluck on the last Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. So that is April 25th. Okay. Is there? Oh, and you wanted to make an announcement. I knew there was something in the back of my head crawling around in there. Or behind your head. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, the Muskoka Concert Association is very honored to host the Elmer Eisler Singers. Um, this is probably Ontario's premier choral um, coming in from Toronto. It's on April 28th. It's a Sunday evening at the Opera House at 7 p.m. Um, there will, will be a pre-concert reception in the Trillium Court with Rand Simpson playing on the keyboard. A lot of you may know Rand. He's a dentist retired dentist who has worked in Gravenhurst and in the Toronto area, but he's also a very gifted um, keyboarder, keyboardist, pianist, anyway, musician. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a superb evening and I hope you will come out and enjoy them. Um, also, I think there's a concert here on May 5th, is there not, with the bifocals in the afternoon? Um, I'm just thinking we might need to check on times for that. Yeah? You said two, at what time? May 2nd. May 2nd? Oh, they've sent me the wrong date. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, thanks. <laughs> there is another concert in May. <laughs> the details to <are> follow. <laughs> Our closing hymn for today is For the Healing of the Nations.
Please be seated. Let us pray. We pile our fears and worries on the bedside table, tossing our dreams and hopes into the waste can to be emptied tangling ourselves up in the covers as well as our fears and spending another sleepless, endless night. But your joy comes in the bird that sings us awake, in the sun that warms us, in the blue skies that mark the way, holy imagination. The day awaits us and we are hesitant to step out the door, our aging body wearying with illness, memories that don't seem as sharp as it once was. Bullies wait to taunt us at the school. We wonder if today we will find out that our job is no longer needed. But your grace comes. In the laughter at lunch with friends and the child who tells us a silly joke in the touch of a loved one, imagination's child. The evening stretches before us and we sit at the table across from the empty tree, tea, chair. We dread the phone call that brings the world's issues inside our safe hidden. We weep at images of pain and suffering flashing before us. But your hope comes in the silence of healing, in the dog who muzzles your hand, in the cat on the lap, in the card sent by an old friend spirit of wonder. You come to us in every moment and in every place, God and community holy, one holy three, offering us restoration. Amen. Just a reminder that there is fellowship following our service today downstairs. Um, there is tea and coffee and treats available and you're all invited to make your way downstairs for a time of um, conversation. Now it is the time to get up and go. We believe in order to follow God into the world. Now it is the time to enter the brokenness all around us. We will go to bring the healing and peace of Jesus to all. Now it is the time to bring words of hope and grace to all. And may God's face shine upon us with favor. And may Jesus Christ restore us to health. And may the Holy Spirit lead us into healing and joy. May we go in hope to love and serve justice, righteousness, and our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, go with God. Please stand.
The peace of Christ go with you.